What's up, fancy hairdressers? So this is gonna be a really fun one today. I'm working with a clipper. We're gonna be using disconnection, graduation, and a lot of fun texturizing techniques. Here's the before. I've taken out kind of a horseshoe section here right at the parietal that slopes down just a little bit in the back. Whenever you're deciding on your pre-sectioning, just think about the shape that you wanna make. I know that the shape that I want is going to be a little heavier in the back, so I'm dropping down that section just a little more in the back so that I don't take out as much weight in the crown. Uh, now, I've blow dried the sides, because anytime I'm working with scissor over comb or clipper, clipper over comb, I really do like to work on dry hair. I feel like it spreads things out and gives you a nice even cut that way. I've got a three guard on this um, clipper right now, and I'm just building this weight up to the corner and I'm using my comb at the very top to stabilize so that I can kind of like push that down and create a nice weight line there. You can do it without your comb. You can see me doing that sometimes as well, but then I usually like to come back and use the comb just to make it a little bit cleaner and a little more accurate. I'm sort of scooping up only at the parietal ridge where I wanna save this amount of weight. I'm really up against the, the skin in the beginning and by the time I get to that top corner, I've just lifted my wrist and scooped up just a little bit. This weight line you're putting in at the top is the design line for the entire haircut. So I'm gonna do that around the entire shape and then we'll come back and talk about the next step.
Okay, so we finished our design line and now we're coming back in after taking down all that bulk and putting in a weight line with a three guard and using a two guard to start to taper things down even more. I've switched from my sort of big clipper to this smaller edger that I have guards for. I like to do that when I'm working in a smaller space um, just to be a little more accurate and not have as much tool sort of to worry about, whether it's like working behind the ear or working on someone who has a smaller head. And I'm gonna go ahead and literally go around the entire perimeter with this slightly shorter guard, scooping up wherever I want things to start blending out. So literally, this can be up to you. You can change the shape of the fade if you want. I'm kind of doing it so it slopes back. So the fade will be a little higher at the very front hairline, sloping down a little lower at the back, sort of mimicking the overall shape of the silhouette that we're gonna be a little bit heavier uh, in the crown and a little bit higher up with more weight taken out on the sides. Just like with my three guard, we're gonna do this across the entire shape, tapering the edges down just a little bit more, and then we'll come back and talk about the next step. So now we're doing the same thing again with uh, one guard. So we're just taking things down slowly, tighter and shorter with each guard, blending things up. You can do this in the opposite order if you want. Some people like to start off shortest and then slowly build up to their longer guards. I like to kind of put in my heaviest length and slowly taper it down. That's what works for me. So you can give that a try, but again, doing it from the shortest length to the longest length is totally fine too. I'm gonna do this around the entire shape <laughs> and then again, we'll come back and talk about the next step when we're done.
Now that our fade is complete, we're gonna come back to this weight line at the top with our scissors and start to do a little scissor over comb just to blend things out a little bit more. You've created a bit of a shelf when you've used your three guard and your comb to kind of lock in that weight line. And now you're just blending the two things together, the fade underneath and the weight line at the top. So I'm just lifting that weight line up and following it straight up. I'm really not tilting my scissor out all that much. You can also go back over some of your clipper work if you feel like you need to tidy it up a little bit. There's no problem with doing that. A little scissor over comb, never hurt anybody. So <laughs> we'll do this around the entire head. Again, blending out that weight line at the top, just going really slowly. When you're working scissor over comb like this, basically I think about it like marry those two tools together. You want your comb and your scissor to stay together. The still blade of your scissor is going to basically connect to the spine of your comb. You're gonna follow that straight up, literally just follow the head shape. And then when you want things to increase length, that's when you'll start to come off the head shape, building things up and saving a little more length. We'll do this around the entire shape. And again, we'll talk about the next step in just a minute. Now we're on to the final touches, the outline. We've taken our guard off the clipper and we're working with the corner of the clipper to start creating these um, outline shapes. What I'm doing here on the side is sort of rounding the hairline out a little bit. I usually feel like round shapes are a lot more feminine and square shapes are gonna be a little more masculine. So I wanna keep this shape really feminine. So I'm actually gonna cut into her hairline a teeny bit so I can create this soft round shape in the very front. Um, we'll also work with some diagonal lines in the sideburn and at the back of the neck and round lines around the ears.
now that the sides are finished, drop down the top and separate things out from the apex to the crown. So really, you're just thinking about what's gonna sit in the back and what is gonna sit in the front and the sides. From there, you're gonna take vertical sections that follow the profile of the head. So literally just a straight line from the crown to the front hairline starting in the middle of the head. We're gonna lift that up and cut short to long from the crown to the front hairline. In this case, we don't really wanna take off all that much. I wanted to keep some extra length. We're just gonna create some shape and take down some of these ends that are getting a bit too skinny. You'll use this section as a guide that will travel around the top of the head. We're gonna take pivoting sections that all start at the same point using your previous section as a guide as you go. This is gonna give you a sort of round shape that gets longer towards the front of the head.
that brings us to our final section of the top. In this case, I just decided to leave the crown out. We had almost the perfect amount of length that I wanted to hang over that weight line to give me that nice sort of soft um, accent to the head shape in the back. But if you had too much length there, what I would suggest doing is to continue your pivoting sections through the back, or if you wanted to take out more weight, you could even cut that off square, connecting it to the underneath. From here, we're gonna blow dry and then do some texturizing techniques. I'm using Thermashape, which is essentially like a heat protector and something that helps your hair blow dry a little faster. And then I used um, Add Power Strengthening Fluid, which is like a styling cream. It gives a little moisture, gives a little protein, and it makes the hair feel a little more full. After that, I'm just going to kind of flat wrap and leaf to get a smoother, straighter look. And we'll come back and talk about texturizing techniques when we're done. Hey, would you look at that, we're done. <laughs> Movie magic. Anyway, moving on, we're just going to work through with our 14 tooth texturizing scissor here. I'm literally just lifting this section up horizontally with my comb and coming in diagonally with the texturizing scissor. I usually like to work on a diagonal line or a vertical line with the texturizer, just because if we come in horizontally, it's just gonna create more blunt um, weight removal. Sometimes that's cool if you want sort of a blunt, like chunky weight removal, you can come in horizontal with your texturizing scissor. Otherwise, I suggest working at angles or working vertically. It's just gonna make things fall a lot softer. Now I've dropped this section down and I'm just working in a visual way. Where does it look heavy and where do I need to take weight out? Just nibbling through <laughs> with the very top of the texturizer. It doesn't take out a whole lot. This is kind of a visual thing. So make sure that you're moving the hair around and you stop when it gets where you want it to go. Don't take out too much. The fastest way to lose somebody, I say this all the time, is to over texturize them. If they feel like they have no hair when they leave, they're definitely not coming back to you again. The back, because we didn't really layer through it, was a little too solid for me, so I switched back to my regular scissor, and now I'm just kind of carving through it to sort of freehand layer, just to break things up a little bit more. I like where it falls, I just don't like how much of it there is that's falling there. So you can do as little or as much of that as you want. You could even use your texturizing scissor to do it if you wanted to be a little less aggressive. This is a little dry wax now, just for some finishing touches and to show off the texture that we cut in with our texturizing scissor. This one is a dry kind of wax, which is really important. I don't want it to be too greasy. I love a dry sort of gritty texture and I love the kind of tackiness combined with that. It's a great way to show off texture on short looks. Almost every line has one. Look around, this one's from Goldwell from the Creative Texture line. You guys know that I use a lot of Goldwell and um, the Creative Texture stuff is actually some of my absolute favorite. And that is our finished look, you guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks for being a member of our website. We have even more fun stuff coming. We've got the color library coming out after the first. And if you have joined after the first, enjoy the color library. <laughs> 
We are going to be adding so much more fun stuff, and we cannot wait to see you again here on FancyHairdressers.com.